intercooler cooling actually works and the two different types of cooling one is conduction one is convection conduction is where there's a physical con contact between the fins and the actual core convection is basically air moving over from one point to another which allows cooling so we're going to talk a little bit about those two things and I'm going to get into the actual fins themselves that are actually used to braise vacuum braise which is the correct procedure um, onto your either your tube and fin or bar and plate type construction. So let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, you've got conduction. In other words, something to do with conducting heat, conducting electricity. Um, we're obviously not talking about electricity here, but I've just used that as an example to give you an idea that when there is heat conducted, you need a physical contact between two pieces, between two surfaces, between two materials or whatever the case might be. So here is two different versions, which are the most popular at the moment, um, of the actual fins that are used to vacuum braze onto your bar and plate or your tube and fin, and then the next set of fins, bar and plate or tube and fin, and then your next set of fins, etc., etc. So conduction is basically the transfer of heat between two surfaces that are physically connected to one another. Now, convection is something where air will flow over the surface and the air will move from one point to another. And as it moves, it cools down. Now, those are the two different types of cooling you get. Now, on the intercoolers, specifically the Garrett cores and most of the intercoolers you get today, air-to-air -air intercoolers or air-to-air -air charge coolers, not water-to-air, air-to-air. We'll get into water-to-air at a later stage. You have your fins, which are basically exposed to the frontal air coming from ambient air flowing over the frontal area of the actual intercooler itself. So the air will flow through these fins and through conduction where these fins are physically connected to the bar or the core that the air flows through, which also has fins inside, we'll get there now, will basically cool as the air, the ambient air and the air transfers or flows over the actual fins through these fins. Um, will basically remove the heat as the air will, will, will transport or, or will be directed through the actual core itself. Now what you'll find is obviously the intercooler is this thick for example. Let's say this is a 90 mil thick core. The intercooler stands up like this and you have this fin. Now if you were to turn it up like this, let's say this is the front of the engine or front of the actual uh, uh, the bumper. The air coming in here, this part of the intercooler will be hotter and as the air flows through, would actually start to get cooler and cooler as the air starts flowing through and these fins start conducting, pulling the actual air, uh, the, the heat out of the core that is now obviously physically connected to the top and the bottom of these fins. Now, let's talk about how these fins are actually physically connected to the cores that the air flows through. Now, they're supposed to be vacuum braced. Now, they do it in a vacuum for a specific reason. Number one, there's no oxidization between the actual solder or aluminium that is now going to become molten and brazed onto the two surfaces, which will then act. Remember, as soon as you heat up and melt aluminium, you get something called aluminium oxide, which is a ceramic. Now, if you look at your pylons, your electricity pylons, those round pieces are actually made from aluminium oxide. That is a ceramic base, which is thermally insulated. It's a heat barrier, and it obviously doesn't conduct electricity. So, in a vacuum, you will not have aluminium when it becomes to a molten state. It will not generate that aluminium oxide, creating a thermal barrier between the actual fin and the bar and plate or the core. Question the cheap Chinese intercoolers. Yeah, I've got a nice big intercooler. It fits the whole frontal area of the car. It's good. Go and do some thermal calculations. Put a thermocouple before the cooler and after the cooler and you will find a big surprise with the cheaper lower quality intercooler cores that you buy from China or complete made up intercoolers that you'll buy from China. The next thing is 
The surface area, and I'll give you guys close-up pictures of these fins, and I'll show you the two different types of fins next to each other. The surface area of the, the, the contact patch of the fin that connects to the actual core on top and the, on the bottom, where the, where the air flows through, makes a massive difference because the more contact area you have, the more ability, the conduction process can actually happen and draw the heat out of the core where the air, the hot air is flowing through. Um, next thing I want to talk to you guys about is FPI, which is fins per inch. So, fins per inch and pressure drop are the two most important parts, are the two most important characteristics or features of an intercooler. Now, the more fins you have per inch, the more conduction you will have in drawing the heat out of the hot core that these fins are attached to top and bottom. The less fins per inch, the less conduction you'll have, the less heat draw you'll have out of those cores that the hot air flows through. But, on the other hand, remember something, this is on the frontal side of the intercooler. If you turn the core to the side, the actual core that the air flows through also has fins inside. Now, the higher the FPI, fins per inch, the higher the pressure drop, the more pressure drop you'll have on the other side. The lower the FPI, the lower the pressure drop. You need to find the balance between the most thermally efficient intercooler core, fins per inch, contact area, the method in which you are attaching physically these fins to the top and the bottom of those cores that the air flows through, as well as the pressure drop. If you get a huge pressure drop, your turbocharger has to overwork to maintain a specific boost pressure. Now normally your boost pressure would be measured not out of the compressor housing, after the intercooler, right next to the, the, um, the intake manifold and or the throttle body. So you want to know what boost pressure is going into the engine after cooling. The more pressure drop you have, or the higher the pressure drop you have, the harder the turbocharger needs to work to maintain a specific or required boost pressure, which will be measured after the intercooler. So there's a, there's a fine balance in the designs of these intercoolers that a lot of people don't know about. Anyway, let me just show you guys a close-up picture of these two different fins and the actual contact surface area that actually contacts and gets vacuum brazed onto the cores that the air flows through. Okay guys, so we've got two designs over here. Now, this specific design is what we term a staggered design. So you'll have fins which are basically mount or are pressed into a specific wave type pattern, all right, as you can see over there. However, they are staggered. So the one wave sits at approximately a 50% overlap to the wave behind it, to the wave behind it, and the wave behind it. So they're basically staggered. And what you essentially are doing is you, this one has been stretched open a little bit to give you a better idea. You are actually getting fins overlapping each other on the inside, which assists in cooling. It gives you a better cooling effect. This specific bend does not have an as aggressive um, overlap. However, wave to wave, you'll find that these are pressed with the fins sticking out and the wave behind it is a simple curve, a U-shaped curve. And then you have the wave behind that with fins pressed out to the opposite direction. And then you have a normal wave and then pressed out to the opposite direction again. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Now, let's have a look at the top face of this fin profile. Can you see it's flat? And it's got a lot of surface area, which obviously then mounts onto the bottom of the core. So you'll have a higher heat transfer or conduction with this type fin, as opposed to this fin. This fin's contact area is very, very small. If you have a look at the top face, where, would, where it actually contacts the core, as opposed to this specific fin over here. So this is something you cannot see because you've got the fin, core, fin, core, and you look at the intercooler from the front like this, and you actually aren't able to see what kind of fin has been used. 
Another thing you need to look, that you need to look out for is the thickness of the actual uh, uh, aluminium plate that has been used and the ability or the susceptibility of that plate through high pressure being able to bend and block the actual flow through the intercooler core. So on the cheaper Chinese imported cores or manufactured cores, you'll find that they try and skimp to get the price point as low as possible on the thickness of the material. And the material here will actually be 0.2 of a mil or 0.1 of a mil as opposed to this specific uh, setup here, which is 0.4 of a millimeter thick. So the thinner the material, the more susceptible it is to bending especially inside of the intercooler core. And as soon as that bends, it blocks the intercooler. Pressure drop. Okay, guys, so that's a little bit more on the subject. Um, I'm doing this in drips and drabs and in piece by piece for a specific reason. I don't want to go into an absolutely massive technical presentation here and I lose 90% of the audience. So I'm trying to keep this as layman as possible so that you can understand or get a better understanding. If there are technical questions and you'd like to go into a little bit more of a technical uh, outline, comment below and I'll make another video for you guys. But I think that would give you a lot more insight into the actual fins used both on the frontal side of the core as well as the actual core itself inside the flow path of the air that enters the tank flows through the side of the, co the, the cooler, through the actual core itself, and then obviously out the other side tank. So I hope that's been informative. I hope it's shed a little bit more light, and I hope I've revealed some secrets here that actually show that no two intercoolers are the same. No two intercoolers are the same at all. So be very careful about what you buy. Um, I know that there's a lot of controversy surrounding some of the manufacturers with the bolt-on intercoolers that are out there um, and they have a look at a price point and as soon as they see that an intercooler that is also bolt-on they assume it's been copied from their design and they go and slate the product. We have got access to all this raw material and we are able to manufacture our own intercoolers. Yes, we are obviously the Garrett Master Distributors for South Africa and we bring the Garrett product in but we also have access and the knowledge on how to manufacture our own intercoolers. Yes, they're made in China. Everybody's are made in China, including, including Garrett, including Precision, including uh, Wagner, including many other brands. But at the end of the day, we have the knowledge and the ability to manufacture a top-notch cooler, and we are able to do it cheaper than most of the other guys around the world. So just looking at the price point of our product, don't assume it's a cheap product. We know what we're doing, and we have access to all the raw materials, as you can see. Hope it's been informative, guys. Like, subscribe, comment down below. We want to hear from you guys. If you've got any questions, shoot them off and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. See you next time.